Okay, um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Declan, Sandra and Joe for inviting me uh, to speak to you today. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your stamina, for staying around. Um, and I promise I won't keep you long. I've been given a 10-minute slot. I can talk very fast coming from Galway, so um, I'll do my very best to, to keep things flowing. So uh, what I want to talk to you about today um, briefly is the Irish Clinical Trials Research Network. Um, and this is something that, that is not new uh, in many people's minds and hearts, I'm sure. Um, and it has been many years in development uh, with a lot of work put in by the directors of the clinical research facilities around the country. It has recently received approval for, for funding from both the Health Research Board and Enterprise Ireland, and we're very happy to be here today uh, letting you know a little bit about it. Um, it is very much at the early stages. We haven't got the contract signed just yet, um, and you, you know the slides are, are, are notable by the absence of a logo or a design, um, and that's because we don't have one yet. We're working on that, uh, so we really are just at the stage of uh, crossing the T's and dotting the I's. But we do hope uh, to be up and running by March or April of this year. So what I want to do in my few minutes that I have with you today is to just give you a little bit of um, background thinking as to why we needed this network in the first place, uh, what it hopes uh, and aims to deliver, um, and what it's going to look like. Okay, so uh, if we look at clinical research in Ireland today and ask the question as to, well, why do we need a national overarching network? Well, we're all familiar with the clinical research facilities that are in place in Ireland presently, um, and they do provide the infrastructure and specialist staff to facilitate collaborative research. However, they lack an overarching support structure which can, uh, with which to coordinate multi-centre clinical trial activities. Um, if we look at the clinical research facilities and we list them off here and we think about where they are located, um, you know, we have quite a lot of good infrastructure now in place across the island of Ireland. The five applicant universities for this proposal were the HRB Clinical Research Facility in Cork, the HRB Clinical Research Facility in Galway, the Wellcome Trust HRB Clinical Research Facility here in St James, the RCSI Clinical Research Centre and, of course, UCD Clinical Research uh, Centre. Including, in, included in clinical research facilities and activities around the island of Ireland are, of course, the other clinical research facilities, such as the Crumlin National Children's Research Centre, the new research centre in Limerick, and uh, also new the uh, Wellcome Trust Wolfson Northern Ireland Clinical Research Facility. And the idea for this network is not that it will just serve those five clinical research facilities that are part of the application, but that it is a centralised national service that will be there to support both individuals, networks, groups, academic and industry alike who would like to do clinical research uh, across the Ireland of Ireland and hopefully um, multi-centre coordinated clinical research. Included, um, you know, when, when I'm trying to set the scene and, and talk to you about clinical research in Ireland, and I come from working with the clinical research facilities, um, there is, of course, a huge amount of activity across the island of Ireland with some really good examples today. Um, particularly when we look at the NILVAD study that Brian spoke of earlier and I can only imagine the difficulties he had in trying to navigate the whole process with that. But there is a considerable amount of hospital-based research with investigators within uh, their own individual units and considering that there is so little protected time for clinical research around Ireland, it really is a noble cause for anyone uh, to try and navigate the whole system of clinical research in Ireland currently. There is considerable uh, clinical research happening in primary care. Uh, of course, there's always an, and hopefully will continue to be the academic research coming from the universities. And there is a certain amount of industry clinical research that is being carried out in Ireland. But if truth be told, we are way behind where we should be in terms of the amount of clinical research that Ireland has the capacity to, to run, manage and deliver on, uh, particularly in the industry, uh, industry field. The charity groups have provided quite a lot of funding, actually, for clinical research in Ireland. And Bernie Hannigan, the uh, scientific officer in Belfast, uh, in her report in 2004 on the clinical research picture of Ireland, said that the charitable groups in Ireland have provided €60 million Euros worth of funding over the last six years for clinical research. And that is uh, not an insubstantial figure um, and, and uh, very much to be noted. There are, of course, a number of national networks that are already established, um, some funded and unfunded. Um, and for those of you that don't know, I come from ICORG, and I worked with the Irish Clinical Oncology Research Group for 11 years, um, and we benefited greatly from both support from 
the Irish Cancer Society being that the charitable group and uh, intense funding from the Health Research Board without which the success of ICORP would not have been possible. Um, but there are a number of unfunded networks who have really tried to furrow their way, um, thinking of the cardiology group in particular, who have been trying for a number of years to establish themselves and to get up and running. Um, it is really, really timely and, and good news that the Health Research Board have, uh, have agreed to fund four new national networks and they're coming on stream in a similar time frame to ourselves. Of course, Molecular Medicine Ireland, ICRIN and the Dublin Centre for Clinical Research have for a number of years been trying to network and coordinate clinical research and provide centralised training and services. And that is not the, the works and the great activity that they did is not going to be lost. And to a certain degree, um, ICTRIN is a follow-on from some of the activities that uh, ICRIN and the GCCR have already done. So, you know, when I, I said to you a few minutes ago that we really are... Um, not carrying out the amount of clinical research that we should be doing in Ireland. Um, this slide here shows a snapshot of similar sized or somewhat similar sized countries to Ireland and the amount of clinical research activity that have been going on, ongoing in these countries uh, in, in two particular time points. So um, the figures were first looked at in 2011 and you can see there with Denmark, Finland and Norway somewhat similar sizes to Ireland but particularly the likes of Denmark and Norway being way ahead of Ireland in terms of the clinical trial activity that is going on there. And in, for the purposes of our, uh, our application to the Health Research Board, we looked again using the same search criteria on clinicaltrials.gov, and the trend is, is pretty much the same. And you'll remember from Deirdre's talk earlier this morning where she talked about um, the number of trials, and the, the figure that I, I took was from the HRB 2013 report, um, and at that time it was about 102 new clinical trials that were being approved by uh, the health research, or the HPRA at that time, um, and Denmark still at that time were approximately three times ahead of us in terms of clinical trial approvals. Um, there are, of course, of course, pockets of success, and you know I mentioned ICORG already to you, um, and again, with in reflection of Deirdre's talk where she said that there were 50% of the HPRA trials were probably in the area of oncology and hematology. So you know ICORG is is showing a really good example of what a networked organisation can do and deliver. And there are, of course, a number of individual study groups, um, like the cardiology and uh, critical care pathway or critical care medicine groups, who recently published in. Um, the New England Journal of Medicine and JAMA and so on and of course Brian's study that he's talking about earlier. So there is a lot of good clinical research, an awful lot of knowledge in the country and there is no reason really why we shouldn't be able to, to move forward. Um, I suppose the biggest stumbling block in the past was the level of infrastructure that was there and the poor investment compared to other countries. And while I'm standing here today delighted that we have received funding um, to do what we're about to do. Uh, there is a cautionary note in it that in comparison to the level of funding that other countries are receiving, it's still very small uh, and in what we're expected to deliver is, is quite high. Um, but uh, it's still all good news uh, to where we are today. Um, I think the fact that there is no protected time or very little protected time for, uh, for investigators and that clinical research is not integrated as part of the health service uh, yet is a big problem but we're hoping with the new establishment of the hospital groups and, and new lobby groups and uh, in all of that that we can change this over time um, and of course there has been considerable government investment um, particularly in the area of laboratory science and biotechnology which is uh, beginning to bear fruit and there are a number of efforts that are being made to address all this and as, as Graeme stood here earlier this morning and talked about the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that are now all coming together with the clinical research facilities in place, the PRTLI funding in the past also uh, sowed the seeds for a lot of, of what we have today. The HRB support uh, for ICORG, as I mentioned to you, in the primary care networks, and of course, uh, where we're all here today with the trial methodology network, these are all excellent step forwards. Um, and the HRB network and definitive intervention studies, which uh, again, there's another call recently where you're all also busy um, uh, submitting applications to the HRB, and of course, the approval of ICTRIN. So in the, um, in the development of, of our business plan, we did do a lot of talking excuse me, to different, uh, to different groups and bodies and, and invested partners in clinical research. And, you know, we tried to figure out wh where are the big problems, why are we so far behind, and what are the things that we could do uh, probably quite easily to, to solve some of the problems that are there and to improve the situation. 
Well, there's not an awful lot that we can do about our population size, but as you can see for other countries, that's not a problem for others. Um, access to investigators and patients, uh, access to key opinion leaders still remains a problem, and it comes back to protected time and, and also being in the know with who are the right people uh, to contact and to be able to access. But what looks to be, and it's been said to me so many times, the low-hanging fruit, the study start-up timelines in Ireland are, are not what they should be. The feasibility process, the investigator identification and selection, the ethics and hospital approval systems, and, and in some cases regulatory compliance around that, site setup and site initiations are, are, are things that seem quite simple and straightforward but are not being navigated uh, efficiently at present and these are things that we aim to address recruitment you know it's often been said to me that you know what by, this is by the companies when I was talking to them Ireland is really good actually to recruit once it gets open once it selects a st suitable study and once it actually gets up and running so you know if we're selecting the right studies um, and we're targeting uh, based on our patient populations then we should be able to recruit successfully um, and data entry is you know it's more of a case where uh, it hasn't been thought through properly in terms of the staffing and the resourcing in centres and those who are there are, are become, becoming over, overburdened in some circumstances. So what does ICTRIN aim to do and how does it propose to address these issues? Well, it aims to enhance Ireland's capacity for conducting innovative, high-quality clinical research for the benefit of people's health and the economy. It aims to advance the care of patients by enabling a connected and coordinated clinical trial network to provide the skills, expertise and infrastructure to design, conduct and analyse multi-centre clinical trials involving human participants in Ireland. And for that sentence alone, so, many, so much of those skills are all over the country. Many of them are embedded within our clinical research facilities and we need to work together in a coordinated way to maximise uh, the results. To support both academic and industry initiated clinical trials involving pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals or clinical per care pathways as well as clinical investigation of medical devices. Now, we do need to be really careful not to be offering or promising to be all things to all people, but these are the aims that we hope to be a centralised service that will be available to support people wishing to do clinical research. Now, to give you a bit of a picture of what it's going to look like and what our plans are, well, to be perfectly honest with you, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We haven't come up with some brand new novel idea of how to do this, and we looked very carefully at uh, different networks across many different jurisdictions. And... While we're not comparable to the UK in terms of our size, in terms of our level of funding, we can look at the models and systems that they have put in place, um, and particularly with the likes of Scotland, and look at that country in a similar size to ourselves, you know, out on the limb of Europe as well, and how come they have become so successful in recent times and what sort of services uh, they have put in place and what we are proposing to do and the services and systems we are proposing to put in place are, ver are modelled very much along the lines of those, those services and systems in these jurisdictions. So the, the roles that we, we are talking about delivering are that Ireland will act or that ICTRIN will act as an, a central point uh, to promote, present, advertise Ireland as a high quality location for clinical research. And of course we can't do that without building metrics to prove and show internationally that Ireland can actually deliver in terms of clinical research. So it's going to be somewhat of a slow grind to be able to promote ourselves out there but the plan is that this is what this central office will be able to do. It proposes to be a central point of contact and access to the network for industry and academics, pharma and devices. And while having come from the area of oncology where the industry who work with the oncologists and teams that are there at present seem to have the whole system figured out and, and sewn up, those, even those countries have said, or those companies have said to me, well, you know, it may be working for us in oncology, but we're not able to navigate the system in other disease areas. And so uh, ICTRIN aims to act as a central point where it should help with navigating through the system, through the clinical research facilities, and also through a database of investigators across the island. The study feasibility process, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit in a minute about what ICTRIN is going to look like and where we're going to have people positioned, but the, the plan is that we will have people within the clinical research facilities whose job it is to navigate the feasibility process within the hospital, to get it through uh, the investigators, to ensure that we are submitting accurate um, and realistic feasibilities and that we are then opening and uh, being active in trials that we actually can deliver on. Um, so we, have, we're, we plan on working with investigator insight identification and, and to screen potential recruitment and patient portfolios and to have information there available. Um, 
we will have a team of people in the central office and of course we'll have the experts in the clinical research facilities so we do hope to be able to provide uh, regulatory and um, ethics pro um, process advice and also to be able to signpost people in the right directions for, for information along those lines. We hope to provide study startup support uh, and to ensure timely delivery of study startups and uh, we hope to offer advice in terms of contract and indemnity. Um, part of the role of Victorin also is to bring groups together to standardise contracts, costing templates, in, um, uh, you know, the different types of documentation that's there around clinical trials that at the moment have to be replicated at every institution. So it will take time, but the plan is there that it will work with different groups to come together to, to standardise these types of documentations. To be able to market Ireland, we need to be able to build up recruitment reports and, uh, and to actually have something to show. So we, we need to show how we can deliver in a timely way and we need to build up uh, our portfolio of what we can achieve. Um, training and education, we're most likely going to be signposting that out to those who are doing it presently and those who, who can provide it with within the clinical research facilities. We do, as I say, have a limited budget, so the central office cannot provide every service that it would wish to uh, or, or, or try to do. So um, as uh, Ruben talked about earlier, the monitoring role that ICTRM will play, it plans to, to work either through the clinical research facilities and also to provide some centralised monitoring and auditing from the central office as well um, to a certain uh, to a certain and uh, unfortunately to start with limited number of trials uh, but it hopes that is something that we hope to be able to deliver uh, into the future and of course we hope to have an all singing all dancing website uh, that will have numerous online services and template documents and be the point where people can come to and say well I want to, I want to figure out about how to clinical research in Ireland where's the first place I should go and we hope that they look to the uh, to the Ictrin website. Okay, there will be some um, additional specialist roles that will be provided specifically by the individual clinical research facilities. Again, we're not going to try and repeat the having the same services being delivered everywhere when we can have specialised skills in certain in certain facilities. And so, when you think about uh, specialist roles that an individual may need when it comes to doing clinical research, like biostatistics, if they want to develop a randomisation scheme, if they want to uh, find a, a group to handle their data management, or indeed their pharmacovigilance. Um, or even for a pharmacy services for a networked trial, uh, that this can be facilitated through the clinical research facilities and centres. Um, there is a, good a great need there really for a centralised uh, sponsor role and to maybe deal with the issues that the universities are having in terms of sponsorship. Um, and, and a lot of the universities have already gone down the road of, of managing these issues, but there is a potential there for ICTRIN itself to take on the role of sponsor, but that is uh, at the moment uh, down the line. Okay, so the proposed roles of ICTRIN, as I mentioned earlier, they're uh, along the lines of the UK and the NRS Scotland model type services where we'll have a central office um, and then we will have uh, ICTRIN people located at each of the clinical research facilities, the five applicant cl clinical research facilities at present. So within the central office, there will be a, a chief operations officer, a clinical industry liaisons officer with primarily focused on the device industry. That position is already there. Many of you are familiar with Fanula Gibbons, who works in this area presently, and it's a position that's funded by Enterprise Ireland uh, and placed in Molecular Medicine Ireland. We hope to put a quality and regulatory affairs manager in place who will actually work with the quality and regulatory affairs managers for each of the clinical research facilities like, like Ruben was talking about earlier in terms of the, the monitoring and to share SOPs like Deirdre was talking about which has, uh, which has already been done um, uh, so, so well uh, amongst the, um, the, the, the quality and training managers that are there and now we're just going to formalise uh, and put certain structures in place. Um, and the corporate support services will be from our central host body. So the personnel then at the clinical research facilities, well, and the plan is that of the five directors, there will be a lead, a lead director for, uh, for ICTRIN and uh, that from time to time some senior uh, staff will be required to, to help with ICTRIN, ICTRIN activities and that there will be um, a senior nurse uh, or a research nurse that, whose job it will be to navigate ICTRIN activity at the site uh, and that there will be funding and resource being made available to support some of these positions at each of the clinical research facilities. So this is what the structure is to look like. So we're planning on having a senior management team of the five directors with one director acting as the chair uh, with a team of people based in the central office 
and the posts that I just described, and then the uh, relevant people at the centres and the uh, clinical research facilities, uh, all together providing this, this, this team of people who support the national network for, for clinical research. And then just to summarise, so what we plan to, to provide is a central point of contact for academia and industry alike, an efficient, knowledgeable and accurate signposting service, an improved feasibility process for Ireland, improved study start-up timelines for Ireland and a coordinated <coughs> quality and training working group. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. That was absolutely fantastic. In the interest of time, as I've been strictly instructed to let people to get to the train station, I think we'll hold questions, but if anybody has any questions, I'm sure Fanu will be more than happy to take them back to the podium, and I'm sure we're going to get loads of future uh, opportunities. Um, it just finally remains for me to thank all the speakers and all the attendees for the day, uh, particularly to Francis and Sandra for organizing it all, and to say we'd very much look forward to you further attending our future meetings, uh, Declan has outlined that are going to be taking place. And if that may wish you all a very safe trip home and a very happy weekend. Thank you very much.